Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about some PCM tuning. Now specifically, we're going to be looking at how you interface with it, with a connector, and uh, maybe not using a rat's nest connector like uh, I had made. So um, let's take a look at this connector that uh, I have in front of me. I actually have two different ones to show you guys in this video, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see how they work. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what we got in the box here. So definitely stick around to the end of the video because at the end I will give out details on doing a giveaway for this right here. Not that, but uh, this guy right here. So this is a standalone programmer. We have our OBD2 port, uh, a switch to turn on and off the ignition, and a power supply to run it. Uh, at the end of the video, I will be giving this away. These are sponsored by Amarillo Cluster Repair. Uh, he he is making and selling these, so you can actually go out and purchase these if you don't want it. Uh, this one is not a standalone. It goes with his uh, box. It's used for testing and powering up instrument clusters. So the uh, ignition switch is already tied into here. Uh, obviously, the light switch doesn't do anything in this setup. Uh, but yeah, this is the... Um, the non-standalone version of it. So for the focus of the video though, we'll we'll just focus on this one because the other one works entirely the same except for the switch is integrated into the box. Uh, and it costs a little bit less because you had to buy uh, this to go with it. We have our OBD2 port, our ignition switch, uh, and just the blue header. And you might be asking yourself, well, what about the red connector? So the, the, uh, the second connector that goes down there, the bottom one, the red or green uh, connector that goes to the bottom one, uh, you don't need it at all for tuning. So I, when I built mine, I originally built it using the two ground wires thinking I needed them. Well, it turns out that's not true. You don't even need them. So this connector, you can completely disregard it. Uh, you can use these. The ones that Amarillo Cluster Repair is uh, selling these are brand new ones. They aren't like junkyard clusters, uh, junkyard connectors that are all beat up, scratched up, and dirty. Uh, he's using a brand new connector, pinning in some fresh pins into it. Uh, so everything's new that you get from one of his. Versus if you build it yourself from a junkyard one and you deep pin it, it's going to look something like this. And sure, you could use some cable ties and make it look a little neater, but let's be honest, most of us building our own stuff, we're lazy. It's just going to end up looking like this, which does not look very professional in front of customers. So I, my main recommendation for going with just a ready-made uh, solution to this is just the fact that if you have customers coming in and seeing you do your bench tuning, uh, you're, you want to look professional. You don't want to have some rat's nest of wires for them to look at while you're doing tuning. So definitely recommend something like this. Now, obviously something like this is easy to build yourself. We have the one that I made over here. Uh, I actually kept a couple more pins than you have to have. All that you have to have for it to work is this ground, uh, this ignition, this battery, and this uh, COM port. These are the, this other battery and this other ignition and this other ground, you don't really have to have it. So it, it will run off of just these three wires. So pin one, pin 19, pin 20, and then uh, pin 58 are the only ones you absolutely have to have to make something like this. So if you want to DIY it, that's your option there. But again, I do recommend going with one of these that Amarillo Cluster Repair is selling. Now then, after you have your connector, you need to figure out how you're actually going to talk to it. Uh, if you're going to use LS Droid or if you're going to use PCM Hammer or LS Droid for Windows, I recommend the OBDX Pro VT or really any of the OBDX Pro products for it. Uh, this is made by the same guy that actually makes LS Droid. So this is a Pete Sontag product. Uh, he does a partner in Australia. Uh, but I, I do recommend this. I like this one because you have the USB port, so you don't have to connect to it over Bluetooth. Uh, I generally, since I'm using a desktop right here that doesn't have built-in Bluetooth, I generally use the, the USB port, but I can use a, U a Bluetooth dongle with it as well. Okay, well, you might be asking yourself, uh, I don't want to buy this. It's a little too much. What else could I use? Well, the answer is you cannot use this. These uh, Really cheap Elm 327 connectors will not work, so avoid them. You could use an OBD Link LX, 
they're dropping support for it in LS Droid, and they're just becoming buggy. So uh, OBD Link, the company that makes these, has been changing the firmware on these and making them less and less compatible with other people's programs. So I would uh, recommend avoiding this and, you know, just get the OBD X Pro. It's honestly the best deal. You don't even get a USB port on the cheaper uh, OBD links. And this is m much more reliable with both LS Droid and PCM Hammer. Now you might say, well, I'm using HP tuners or I'm using uh, EFI Live. So those come with their own dongle. You can use those. Uh, I do believe that OBDX Pro is working on a driver to work with some of those other tools, uh, but don't quote me on that. So uh, definitely something to keep into consideration. But yes, just an OBD2 port. So anything that you're already using to tune in car will work with this if you're already using it. Just my recommendation is to match the OBDX Pro with the standalone, or if you want to get this because you tune uh, or repair instrument clusters as well, you can get this one as the non-standalone version. Some of you guys might choose to take this off. You just take that washer off right there and you can take the screw off and you don't need to use a screw. I like the screw, it makes sure to I get a good connection, uh, but you just put it in with the, these hooks line up with some that are internal on there. So it goes this direction. And then you just have a seven millimeter screw that you're gonna tighten in there. And that's all there is to hooking this thing up. And like I said, you do not need that bottom connector. So this connector is completely unnecessary. We have our switch here and then we have our connection. So if you get the giveaway here, it'll come with that power supply that you can use. So let's talk about actually communicating with this PCM. So I'm gonna use PCM Hammer for this video. You obviously can use LS Droid or LS Droid for Windows as well. Uh, just PCM Hammer is what I generally use. So that's what I'm gonna use for this video. Uh, these three tools I just talked about, uh, PCM Hammer, LS Droid, or LS Droid for Windows, those are all meant for just reading and writing to the actual PCM. Uh, it doesn't actually do the tuning for you. You take the that bin off of there, which is all the memory on there, you take that memory off, you save it, and then you edit it in another tool, uh, and then you can then write it back to it with this. So we're just gonna be talking about the reading and writing in this. We're not actually gonna do any tuning in this video, but the software that I generally use to do my tuning would be Tuner Pro, and you have to match up with another XDF file. It would take a really long video to explain it all, uh, so I just can't fit that into this one. So we'll just cover reading and writing to the PCM. So in this one, we're gonna be using PCM Hammer, which is found on GitHub. Uh, following this link. I'll have the link down in the description of the video. Uh, but yeah, go to their GitHub and then you just come over here to the releases section, click that, and this is where you can download the uh, zip file of it and use that. So that is how you find it. I know not everyone's familiar with GitHub, so I figured I'd show it. Um, now, once you have it downloaded, I don't have the latest version downloaded. Uh, I have version 14. They're now on 21. So definitely be aware of that. Um, you go in, select device, and you're going to have to find your device that you're using. So I know mine is on COM port 13, uh, and it is in OBDX Pro. Uh, these tools are all supported by PCM Hammer. So you have the OBD Link or the All Pro. Uh, the AVTs or the OBDX Pros. So there we go. Uh, the OBDX Pro does support uh, four times communication, so we can enable that. And then we can go ahead and read properties to make sure we're talking to it. And sure enough, we are talking to it and we can see our calibration and our hardware ID. Um, this OS ID is what you'll take to go see if you can find a uh, XDF file that matches this OS ID for tuning in, um, in Tuner Pro. So uh, OS ID is what you'll use to go look for that. Uh, but again, we're not going to be doing that in this video. Read the entire PCM. So we can just click read entire PCM. And we will do, we'll just save this as video because it's for the video. And then we can just click continue. And there we go. 
Uh, it will unlock it. It'll attempt to switch to four times since we have that enabled. And then we will read this entire PCM, which does take some time to do. Uh, for your lights that you're expecting to see on here, you should see your power light on, your status light should go away, and your OBD light should come on at the time of doing this. The status light should light up blue when it's more of in an idle state, if you're using the OBD-X Pro. Okay, so now we have successfully read this entire PCM and saved our file, so it'll be in our uh, folder. So now let's say we've gone and we've done all of our editing, editing and all of that. We're going to then want to uh, write the um, PCM. You generally will only need to write the parameters unless you're changing the OS uh, on there, then you can do that. Uh, you can also do a full flash where you clone one of these. So let's say you've tuned one and you've burnt out some pins on there. So let, let's say the the IAC uh, is burnt up on there and it can no longer control the IAC on your thing and you spent a lot of money getting that tune done and you don't want to pay it again. You can just clone that PCM and put it in there. That'd be a legitimate reason to do it because uh, you've already paid for that and that PCM's damaged and you need that data to clone onto another one. Uh, I. It, Yes, it's possible to do shady things where you keep cloning the same one so that way you don't have to pay for the key. Sure, it's possible to do that. Um, don't do that, though. That's immoral. Um, but that's all I have to say on that subject there. Yes, it's possible. You shouldn't do it, though. Um, so that's that's kind of all there is to reading it and then writing it's the same thing uh, This one's it's gonna end up skipping doing all the writing because it's gonna just verify all the blocks and go Hey, there's nothing different here and in the right, but I will show how to uh, Write it so we'll just write the full flash so clone and then yep and Then we'll just do the same one so that way it'll go faster because it will just skip pretty much everything. It'll look at it and go, oh, all of this is the same. There's no need to write it. See, so it goes the verdict that it's the same. So it ends up not actually writing anything in this case. So yep, cleared all trouble codes and said it's good to go. Um, now, so why did we put a switch on here? What's this switch used for? That's for if you change the VIN number. So if you uh, need to change the VIN, um, you, you put another valid VIN number in there, and then you just click OK, and then the VIN's successfully updated. Yes, it's the same one, but now you have to turn it off. So you need to turn it off for until the PCM goes to sleep. I believe it takes 20 seconds for it to go to sleep. It may be 30 seconds. So, so just leave it turned off for, I'll call it a whole minute. Uh, and then you can disconnect the power. But when you change the VIN, you do have to turn it off, tell it to go to sleep, so that, or else it won't write that VIN change to memory. So you gotta do that so it will write it to memory or else you're not gonna get that change done. So that's the whole purpose of the switch, is for changing the VIN number. We could see when I switched that switch back on, it popped to life with some communication there. All right, so the question of how much is one of these gonna cost? This is with the brand new connector and going to the box. So going to one of these, that's going for $65. And the other one, this guy, the standalone, uh, they're $85. Uh, I don't get any money for this. You know, I'm, he, he sent them to me as a sponsorship thing. You know, I just, I thought his product was cool. So I was like, hey, yeah, send me one. I'll, I'll show it off on the channel. So I'm not getting paid here. Uh, for the giveaway, I'm giving away the standalone. So that's the $85 one. Uh, all you're going to do is go down in the description of the video. You'll see a link. Um, probably gonna, I'm really busy these days, so it'll probably be Friday before I actually look at it. So the end of the week, uh, I'll look and pick a winner and then I will announce of it winner. 
please put a good contact email in there. Don't give me some random email address in there. Put a good contact email in there so I can email you and let you know that you won. And all of what you're going to be responsible for is shipping. It's going to be in one of these padded envelopes, priority mail. So that's about $9. If you want me to put it in a uh, regular uh, rate one that's going to be like snail mailed to you, just let me know. I do have some regular envelope envelopes too that I can go in that uh, would just be slower shipping. So you just let me know. I think that'd probably be like $3 to ship it to you that way or the $9 priority, whatever. I'm flexible with it. Uh, just, you know, I'm not getting paid on this. So pay, pay for shipping and it's yours for free. Just uh, fill out the form and let me know why you want it. For the why you want it, I just want to know, like, are you going to use it for business or is this just going to sit on a shelf somewhere? Uh, and I, I really don't care. I just, you know, it's a little more interesting to read. Makes going through and picking a winner easier if there's uh, something like that instead of just, you know, picking a random number. So yeah, just uh, check out that link in the description. Let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one.